Joining us now for reaction just outside of the Washington, D.C., is uh, he's at CPAC, Nigel Farage, Fox News contributor and former U.K. Independence Party leader. All right, Nigel, you're there at CPAC with all those activists. And uh, we, the, the president talked about the judges today in his speech and how if we don't keep this momentum going, you know, it, we won't get judges on the courts and a lot of his agenda can be undone. Uh, what was your sense from the president's speech? Well, of course, it's all about the midterms, isn't it, really? I mean, he's achieved amazing things. Um, he said today uh, that he kept more promises that he'd actually made during the election campaign, which was a great line. Uh, but he's doing his stuff. He got tax reform through just before Christmas. Very, very important. But he needs to make sure that he keeps majorities in both of those houses in the midterms. So how does he keep the Trump revolution rolling? Well, I'll tell you something. I shared a platform with him in Mississippi back in the presidential campaign. He went round the country speaking to big audiences. He's a wonderful motivator. But what I saw today was a president in a different gear, a president who was using humor, a president who was light, a president who even told a joke against himself about his own bald patch. And I think if Trump goes round the country in the run-up to these midterms and performs anything like he did today at CPAC. He will keep this momentum going, and that'll lead through to everything he needs to do. Yeah, Nigel, you and I ran into each other uh, this morning, and you were Thank nice you. enough to agree to come on the show tonight, which is so awesome. But it was right, it was right before the president spoke. I spoke at around 9 o'clock. And what I was yeah. trying to do, and I know you said this as well, you had such a great speech, that we need to be happy warriors. I mean, we're winning on all these big yeah. issues. The left is resistant. I, this whole dour, conservative, you know, hangdog oh. kind of approach, it's tedious. Nobody wants to be on that ride. Look, career politicians are as dull as ditch water. Why? They're always being safe. They don't want to take a risk. All they care about is getting re-elected. They're not doing this out of passion, belief in country, patriotism, caring about ordinary people. They are dull. They are humorless. They are without any real personality. And what sparkled today from the president was him being him. And I was very, very privileged Laura to meet you this morning, but I was also very privileged to meet the president just after he came off stage and I saw a man there, you know, absolutely at the top of his game. I get the feeling that this president is now really enjoying what he's doing. You're seeing his, his real personality coming out and uh, I have to say, my view, my view and I've watched this and I've followed this and I've been part of this, even though I'm a foreigner, but my view is with Trump, the best is yet to come. Yeah, I mean, he referred to the next seven years, clearly uh, putting, to, yeah. putting to rest these ideas he's not going to run for re-election. I want to play for you the media's reaction to, to the president's hour-plus-long speech. Let's watch. This morning at CPAC, he covered at least 31 different topics in an hour and 15 minute speech. But it took almost 40 minutes before the president began his conversation on the Parkland school shooting. President Trump made time in his CPAC speech today to address his bald spot, yet nothing on Russian election meddling. Both at CPAC and at his news conference, he conveniently avoided talk of his new tougher position on guns. Nigel, I mean, the president was self-deprecating, which the media had complained he never was. I've, yeah. I howled. Yeah. We were watching it in, in our hotel room. We were all screaming. My producer said we were just screaming. It was so funny. And it lightened the mood. But they, they literally can never say anything positive. It doesn't matter what he does. Even if he pushes some no. gun control measures, they say it's not enough. It's unbelievable. No, of course they don't. And you remember with Ronald Reagan, it was exactly the same. They never ever forgave Reagan for winning uh, once and then twice. And they kept at him all the way through his presidency. But you know what? He goes down in history as one of the great presidents. And I don't think it matters anymore what right. CNN say or the New York Times write. It doesn't matter. The world has changed. You know, uh, people out there, ordinary folk, decent, ordinary people who live their lives, do their jobs, pay their taxes, obey the laws, bring up their families, 
they don't care anymore what mainstream media is telling them. Yeah. Do you know what? They make, they make up their own minds. I think you're right. The progress has left them behind. And it's almost not... It's almost not worth engaging with them or getting demoralized or distracted by what they're saying or the constant resistance. Move the ball down the field, get great legislation passed, do the stuff that he's already done, and then some. I want to show a, a poll on screen. Uh, U.S. satisfaction uh, with world standing hits 13-year yeah. high. 45% uh, yeah. yeah. positive rating. Uh, 2017, it was 32%. 2005, it was 48%. That's the Gallup poll. So, uh, Nigel, my question to you is, uh, how, are, how are we being viewed, do you sense, internationally? Um, uh, Americans are happy with how they think we're being viewed by the rest of the yeah. world under Trump. At least it's gone up. It's not, still not a majority. But that's good news, considering where they predicted he was going to take us. Well, let's be fair. Obama was a disaster. America's standing in the world went down considerably during the eight-year period. And everyone said that Trump on the world stage would be an embarrassment. He'd be a dummy. He wouldn't know how to behave. And you know what? Right from that Riyadh speech, his first speech, through to Davos, where he, del he delivered the line, you know, America first, but America not alone, did it beautifully, and people understood it, all the way through. He has behaved on the international stage with huge dignity, with great confidence. In fact, when he was in Beijing walking around, I thought he was about to put a bid in to buy the place. Uh, you know, he's <laughs> that looked... would be nice. <laughs> yeah, we need that he's to happen. Looked... We don't even have time to get into the China well... thing, but he's finally, he's, he's, he's actually the first president to address the China threat in a substantive way on trade oh, and uh, not afraid well, to say so, Nigel, well... which is fantastic. Uh, well, Nigel, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. We, we got to roll, but uh, have a great time. It was great thank to you. see you today and fantastic speech.